Hello everyone and welcome to this segment of our board candidate video series. And on this segment, we're going to be focusing on the realities of school board service. And here with me to discuss that topic is Jan Meese. Jan is the current president of the Missouri School Boards Association and a member of the Columbia Board of Education. And also Melissa Randall, the executive director of the Missouri School Boards Association. And thanks a lot for being with us. We appreciate it. Our pleasure. Melissa, let's start with you if we could. Why are school boards important in our system of public education? Well, there are a variety of reasons of why school boards are critical in our system of public education, both in Missouri and, and throughout our nation. Um, one of their primary responsibilities is to serve as the voice of the community. And when we have the most critical uh, role of educating our children, establishing our future for our communities, for our state, for our country, school boards provide that direction at the local level. They're the governors of the local public schools. They are tasked with creating policy, policy to implement state and federal law, to give direction to the local school district. The superintendent is then tasked with taking that policy and implementing it. They're also tasked with setting the budget, the priorities, the financial pri priorities for the district and uh, for being that community voice as we serve our children. So a lot of responsibilities for a local board of education, Melissa. And um, so for our board candidates, should they be elected in April, uh, they would uh, receive some training on, and, and uh, some background information on some of these topics, won't they? That's right. Missouri has a state law that asks and requires actually our, our newly elected board members to receive 16 hours of training. In most communities, the uh, board serves as the largest employer in their community. We certainly have one of the most important functions that they're responsible for and a very complex uh, organization that they're governing. So it's critical that they have some training before they get too far into their service as a school board. So our state law requires this training to be conducted within the first 12 months of their service. Mm -hmm. And Melissa, our school board members across the state, they come from every walk of life, don't they? That's and that, right. And that's something that we want to see on school boards, isn't it? That's exactly right. That's the reason our law only has an age requirement and a residency requirement for school boards so they can provide that local community's voice and perspective as they're serving in this function. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jan, how long have you been on the Columbia Board of Education? I'm in my 10th year. Your 10th year. So when you first uh, started serving on your board 10 years ago, what was the biggest surprise for you? The biggest surprise is you don't know what you don't know when you take the role as a school board member. I had been in our community for almost 40 years, had been an educator with the district, had attended school board meetings, and I thought, well, this looks really simple. You know, I can do this, but the complexities of a school district are such a large organization, kind of blows your mind when you first take your seat at the board table, that you, there are so many facets to making this organization run smoothly that your learning curve starts small and it continues to grow for all the time that you serve on your board. How long did it take before you really felt comfortable as a, as a functioning member of your board? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. People think I talk a lot, but that's not necessarily true. And when you're at the board table and the audience is looking at you and some of you are on school boards that are um, televised and things of this nature, sometimes it's good to be quiet and just kind of get a feel for how the um, parliamentary procedure of the board runs and how questions are posed to certain members of your administration. So I was basically um, sitting and listening for the first couple of months. Not that I wasn't absorbing, but it, it was a good way for me to start. What would you say was the most difficult thing to learn as a new board member? An example, my grandson attends school where I am on the board and he says to me, Grandma, you're on the school board now, so you can get me new basketball goals at my school. Well, the most difficult thing for you to learn as a board member is your true role and responsibility as you sit on that board. You represent all stakeholders, not your family, not your neighbor. You represent all of them with various um, agendas that they might bring to you. And so it's important for you to realize your role on that board is to, you know, you're the superintendent hirer, you're the budget, and you're the policy maker. And the operations of the district are left to those administrators that work with your superintendent. 
Melissa mentioned the 16 hours of training uh, that new board members need to receive. Jan, would you say, would you advise our candidates if they're elected to get that training as quickly as possible? As quickly as possible. I um, remember vividly, I still have my notebook from my training because it was so impactful because it gave you all kinds of um, key points that you are going to be dealing with as a school board member. Not only that, you form a network with those other new board members and when you see them at various MSBA functions throughout the rest of your career on your school board, you have a special bond and they can be mentors and they can help you um, when you have questions. Mm -hmm. Are there uh, more responsibilities when you're serving on a school board, Jan, than simply attending a meeting once a month? Yes, yes. You are definitely an ambassador for your schools and your community. Different boards have different responsibilities in terms of how many meetings you might hold a month, if there's extra committees that you need to um, be a participant in. And so um, don't think it's one Monday night a month for two hours because you are out there all the time being a sounding board for your community and also learning about what your community's needs are. So when you're out in the community, Jan, do people look at you as a school board member and do they approach you with maybe uh, specific uh, concerns that they might have about their own child in a school district? How do you handle those things? Without a doubt, <laughs> without a doubt. And it's very important when people come to you with an issue, you understand that they're being an advocate for either their child or a program that they believe strongly in and you have to take their um, input and say, yes, I hear what you're saying and have you talked to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And so, you know, you have to help them follow an appropriate chain of command. Just because you're on the school board, you are not the decision maker on each individual piece of um, issues that people might bring to you. And uh, Melissa, we often say that one of the important responsibilities of a school board is to uh, employ the superintendent, but what about the rest of the school district staff? What's the relationship between a school board and the teachers and other school district staff? Well, in terms of uh, supervisory role, the, we teach that the CEO, the superintendent, is the employee, the sole employee of the board, and they charge that superintendent and their evaluation of him and their uh, uh, correspondence with him, they charge this individual with supervising the rest of the staff. So while the board obviously has the ability and should communicate with uh, uh, the rest of the staff in an appropriate way, they should not see themselves in a supervisory role over those individuals. That's what they have asked and tasked their superintendent with doing. Mm -hmm. So Melissa, what should our board candidates be doing right now uh, before they may be elected uh, in April? Should they be attending board meetings, for example? Well, I think they need to follow Jan's advice. Uh, she gave great advice on that and listen and learn. Uh, they think it would be a great idea to, to go to your local board meetings and to get an idea of what the issues are. Uh, if you have a chance to look at the policy, all the policies for districts are open records and many of them are posted on a district's website. So get an idea of uh, the direction the district is going. Look at their, their uh, strategic documents and uh, have a grasp of uh, what your responsibilities are prior to being elected. Mm -hmm. uh, Jan, you're such a great advocate, not only for your local school district, but for public education in general. Is that important for school boards to see themselves in that role and to get involved beyond their own local school district, maybe on the state and even national level? It is. Um, as you begin your board service, and, and I do want to wish all these candidates that are listening good luck in your um, proposed campaigns, um, the, the impact we have that we don't realize how large a voice we are in the state of Missouri as school board members. We are the largest group of local elected officials who impact what happens in our state legislature and therefore in our federal um, legislatures. So you can be an advocate by working hard within your community and MSBA has regional networks to help you afford more of your voice being heard. As, a, as an MSBA member, I have been to various government offices, both state and national wise, and when items that are coming to our legislators are really controversial. Those phone calls and emails that you would make as a school board member are truly, truly beneficial and impactful to our legislators who are trying to impact 
education in your local community. So yes, there, there are many ways to be an advocate and I would strongly support candidates to be more active when they have their feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. And Melissa, uh, support uh, is available for, for our board candidates and then once they are elected uh, to their local board of education uh, through MSBA, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right, Brent. Uh, we are an organization that was created by school board members. We are designed to support school board members and ensure their success because uh, ultimately that is that leads to student success throughout Missouri. So we have all kinds of resources available. We have a hotline that is free and available to all of our member districts. We can provide legal information, policy information, uh, information on advocacy and uh, on how to function as a board member. Uh, so we are available um, at all times for, to school board members. All right, Melissa Randall, Jan Meese, thank you so much for joining us. And we've just, as you mentioned, just scratched the surface really on roles and responsibilities. And our board candidates will uh, uh, learn a lot more about that through our training once they are elected uh, in April. So thank you very much for sharing your expertise. You. And we thank you for joining us on this segment of our board candidate video series.